Hey guys, what's up? It's the Culture Detective here investigating your favorite animes and today I'm going to be doing an anime movie review. But right before that, I found out that I forgot to um, do a couple of things when I did my what did I bring back from Japan video. So I'm going to add on to that a little bit by, um, by uh, doing this. This, yes. So uh, one of the things I brought back from Japan but I didn't try on camera was actually the windmill candy. The um, the windmill mint candy that I got from Niki no Kashi in Ueno, Tokyo. Um, so uh, yeah, this is a number 22 windmill candy, windmill mint. And uh, there are uh, three reds, three reds right here, three reds. Four yellows, five, no wait, three reds, four yellow, five. Why is it yellow, four, yellow, five? Okay, I don't get it anymore. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, there are multiple colors in here. Um, oh, so maybe it's just the dye they're using, right? But uh, yeah, um, let's, let's try it. I actually have tried this already. I'm just trying it on camera for the first time. Um, because I gave, I bought three packs of this. I gave one for, um, I gave one to, I think, Miriam. I gave another one to Retablo, and this is the only one I have left. Um, so, uh, here we go. Aha! Really nice, really colorful. Mmm! It's really good. Mm. It's sweet, but it's not overpowering. Now, another thing I um, completely forgot to do, and for the right reasons, is to unbox my hentai. Um, so obviously, this is from K-Books. Um, now, um, you've seen the cover here, right? I mean, it's, it's, they allow it on YouTube. By the way, I specifically chose this because there's no nudity on the cover. Um, and it's Dancho, it's Noedo Dancho. So, it's someone I know at least. But I never actually unpacked it. It's pure, oh, do I need a pair of scissors to do this? There's no way to open this. What the heck? There's no way to open this. Hold on. Hold on a moment. There we go. I uh, cut it open. I don't know if there's the right way to open it or not. I, I literally used a pair of scissors to snip it. But, uh... Oh. Damn. Okay, there we go. Um, also, this thing is 600 yen, and even though it's really cheap, I realized that this is actually more expensive than one whole book of manga, which is 440 yen. But yeah, so what I'm about to show you is like, I have to blur it all out, basically. Um, okay, so first page, literally just a cover. That's cool. Um, right. Oh, there we go. So there's actually a whole story, you know. Uh, this is a Shirogane no Eru. This is um, I can't read Japanese. I'm sorry, but I think it says you know he's a virtual, he's a virtual YouTuber, works for Hololive, and is the third third generation. Um, and you know, just a bunch of things about her, ASMR. He likes she likes beef bowls. She, she ran out of money, like she, she doesn't have pocket money anymore, and she's actually, um, there's actually a cameo from other whole live members as well, like Pekora, Marin, Dusha, and they're all like having a meal or something, um, and she was like, oh, it's Flair's birthday, I want to buy her a birthday gift, 
but I don't have the money to do that. Um, and then she's like, oh, what should I do? Oh, and then <laughs> this is where it begins. So she's, you know, helping someone fall asleep or something. Um, and she's like, oh, there's a way to uh, help her. There's a way to uh, gain profit. Well, <laughs> there we go, folks. Oh my god. And at the very end, uh, she actually shares a kiss with Flair, which is very wholesome. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Wow. But uh, yeah, if you have the chance to go to Akihabara, go to Radio Kaikan, third floor. Go inside, because you, they don't put this at the very front of the floor, right outside the escalator. Radio Kaikan, third floor, go to K-Books, there you can find hentai. Or, Dashinbang also has a great variety of hentai. Um, so, um, there you go. So anyways, today I'm going to be doing a movie review on Demon Slayer Road to the Swordsmith Village, or in Japanese, Kimetsu no Yaiba Jogen Shuketsu, Soshite Katanaji no Satoe. So Demon Slayer is a manga written and illustrated by the one and only Koyoharu Gotoge, and then it is adapted into an anime by UFO Table, led by director Sotozaki Haruo. So let's talk about what I think of Demon Slayer. Uh, in general. So Demon Slayer really stormed the world of anime in the year 2019, or actually it, it's way before, I think it was 2018, when season 1 dropped and the entire anime community was insane about it, because Demon Slayer is suddenly this huge anime that a lot of people, including non-anime fans, got into. And yeah, while season one is great, it has a lot of great moments in it, I do think that it started off not very strong, and the last few episodes of season one also didn't really land for me. So in my opinion, it's a little bit overrated. And then the Mugen Train movie came out in the year 2019, and um, I watched it in early 2020, I believe. And it was pretty amazing, actually, because... Um, or did it come out in 2020? I think Mugen Train came out in 2020. So yeah, Demon Slayer's Mugen Train is the next output of the anime. And it is a movie, and I thought it is really good. Even though this movie doesn't feel like a movie, it just feels like several anime episodes slapped together. It still works out, because it's not an awkward experience. The animation is freaking beautiful, and offers a a cinematic quality that many other animes do not. I also think the fights, the flashbacks, and the final battle are all really well done. And the Mugen Train arc became one of the most memorable arcs in the entire story for me. And that is until season 2 is released earlier last year. Wow. Now, Demon Slayer season 2 is way better than season 1 in my opinion. The Entertainment District arc is truly awesome and amazing. It's so much more fun and colorful, first of all. The humor works really well. The villains are also even more memorable. The fights are so much more creative. And essentially, UFO Table takes everything great about Demon Slayer and turn it up to 11. The animation is amazing. The voice acting is top-notch. And the highs and lows and twists and turns just make... Demon Slayer Season 2, a fantastic season. And so to follow that up, Yuvo Table decided to release another movie. Yeah, so uh, now we have Road to the Swordsmith Village, but uh, the movie version. And of course, Season 3 will come out shortly after the release of this movie. In fact, about a month ago, the main voice actor, Hanai Natsuki, and singer Eme, as well as the director, came to LA downtown for the premiere of this movie, and there and it's a world tour thing, so it's kind of a huge freaking deal. Now, first of all, let's talk about the new OP, as I always have to talk about. This OP is called Man with a Mission, and it's sung by Millet, 
and I have reviewed her music a year ago, and I thought it was kind of okay, but I'm not surprised that UFO Table is going to pull another really popular J-pop singer uh, from the pool of uh, modern Gen Zers, J-pop singers, because last time they got Emma, so they got Millet. It's only a matter of time until UFO Table asks Yoasabi to do the next freaking OP or something like that. Now, I think the OP is fine. It's not that great or anything, um, but it certainly doesn't have the hype I felt for Emma's Zankyo Sanka, which I think is a fantastic song. But anyways, let's talk about the movie itself. Yeah, this movie is essentially the last two episodes of season two and the first episode of season three slammed together into one movie. And the first two thirds of the film is basically one gigantic recap of everything that had happened in the story so far. And then the literal copy and paste, carbon copy of the last two episodes of season two. Literal carbon copies to the point where, you know how in anime sometimes scenes that happen at the very end of an episode will replay again on the next episode. So there are multiple times in this movie where we see scenes twice. On top of that, they forced us to watch multiple end credits. So the end credits for the ending of season two, and then the end credits for season three, episode one, and then the end credits for the overall movie, we had to sit through three end credits. And then of course we had to go through Emma's OP, which I thought was kind of weird to leave it in the movie because this movie is supposed to be different, right? Even in Mugen Train, we didn't get the Gurenge OP anymore. Uh, we did have Gurenge as a background song, but they didn't copy and paste the whole damn OP into the movie. They didn't do that while in this movie, they literally copy and paste it, Emez Zankyo Sanka OP, and just paste it here, the whole thing uncut. And then we had to sit through another OP, the new OP by Millet. So we have to watch two OPs in one damn movie. So yeah, even though I'm not, um, like, like I wouldn't say it's the worst idea of all times to put some recap into the movie. Of course, I'm not a fan of it, but it's not the worst idea ever. At least reduce the OPs and, re and, and cut down the repeated scenes. Why are you so lazy about it? Your UFO table, one of the biggest anime studios, why are you so lazy when it comes to making this movie? And UFO table wasn't even that lazy when they, when they made Mugen Train. They didn't copy and paste full scenes. 99% of Mugen Train is new original material. While in this movie, about 30% of it is original, really. So uh, yeah, even though I think the last two episodes of season two are groundbreaking, they are really great. The animation is beautiful. The voice acting is so freaking good. I mean, everyone from Hanae Natsuki, Shimano Hiro, uh, Matsuoka Yoshitsuku, and Kito Akari, everyone did an amazing job. And uh, some of the voice acting is so damn intense, uh, it, it almost pushed me to tears. And just the way they made the fight so damn insane and, and intense, it was crazy, given that this isn't even the final arc of the whole story. All of the characters pointing their katanas at the villain's neck on the verge of slicing it, and that lasted for like five minutes and it's just nothing but screaming and intense music is so over the top. It's actually insane and I actually enjoyed that a lot. But now we have the first episode of season three. Okay, fine. You know what? I'll forgive you for copy and pasting the literal last two episodes onto this movie. Now we have the first episode of season three. And I'm going to be honest here. It's also not that great. I'm sorry. So yeah, the first episode of season three is where Tanjiro wakes up from coma after the fight in season two. And um, before that, we have uh, the infinite castle scenes where we have the villains meeting up. The upper rank demons meet up in this infinite castle with the big baddie, the big bad villain, 
uh, Muzan showing up. And while I think the design of the Infinite Castle is really beautiful, yeah, this scene is n not very great for me. And mainly, it's because of the editing. It's so awful. It's so insanely dramatic and trippy for some reason. The camera swooshing side by side, the crazy match cuts, cutting every few seconds. One normal conversation felt like 15 different shots mashed together. It's so jumpy, it's so choppy, and it feels like that super dramatic Indian soap opera meme, and it's really distracting for me. And while I think the demon designs are really interesting, the editing kind of ruined that scene for me. And then we have Tanjiro waking up from the coma, and uh, it's been two months, and the people told them that Zenitsu is somewhere out there doing his own adventure now, and Inosuke um, isn't really interested in, in um, following Tanjiro, but essentially Tanjiro lost his sword again. He chipped his sword, and he needs to get a new sword. But the swordsmith abandoned Tanjiro because he is so pissed that Tanjiro keeps breaking his swords. So Tanjiro thought, you know what, screw it, I'm just gonna go to the swordsmith village myself and look for some swordsmiths to make me a new sword. Let's go! So uh, thus the name of the arc, Road to the Swordsmith Village. And yeah, nothing happens. He goes to the Swordsmith Village, he meets some people, he sets up the story, and then at the very, very, very end of the episode, we get something interesting, something remotely interesting. And then boom, end credits. We're given nothing else. So yeah, that was kind of underwhelming. And I understand episode one usually doesn't really set up much. Usually episode one is act one uh, of an arc. So we're setting up the setting. Something interesting is happening now. Okay, what's going on? But by making it the end of a movie, it makes the whole experience so much less rewarding at least include episode two in there as well so that we have a little more by ending it right before something interesting happens is just really underwhelming. So uh, yeah, I, I didn't really enjoy this movie all that much, unfortunately, because a lot of it is recap, something that I've seen before. And while I am shooketh when I was watching the last two episodes of season two, I still think it is kind of a cash grab, kind of a waste of time. The screening of this film is definitely made for die-hard Demon Slayer fans, because all the non-fans will probably be pretty pissed at this. And while I'm a fan of Demon Slayer, I'm not really happy about this. The fact that I wasted 14.5 US dollars on this movie ticket, and the fact that I just sit on a bus for over an hour back and from, to and from this cinema, plus the fact that I had to wait at the bus stop for 44 minutes so that I could go back home, made this entire thing very unrewarding. And you can almost tell by the title of the movie, uh, Kimetsu no Yaiba, Jogen Shuketsu, so the end of the upper rank demon from the last season, Soshite, and then Katanaji no Satoe, let's go to the swordsmith village. But uh, yeah, I, I guess if there's one thing that I like about this new arc, it's that it seems that Zenitsu and Inosuke will not be involved. They are taking a break. That's re very nice. I like to see the cast ensemble changing a little bit. We have Kanahana uh, playing the Lust Hashira, Love Hashira. I don't even know. Um, but that's great. I love to hear more Kanahana. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm giving the new Demon Slayer movie a strong 4 to a light 5 out of 10. So, have you watched this new movie? Comments below, let me know. Subscribe if you want more. And thanks for watching.